Hey there awesome physics students. Let's talk about electric current. Well, what causes electric current and what is it anyway? Well, before we get into that, let's again revisit our cause, effect, and property framework that we talked about so many times before. Uh, first, of course, we're always going to use uh, forces cause acceleration. But of course, there's a property in the middle, the inertia, which is measured by mass. And then there's a law that goes with this, that is Newton's second law, the sum of the forces equals the mass times the acceleration, or the uh, cause equals the property times the effect. There's also the torque, um, which causes angular acceleration, but again, there's a property in the middle, that is the moment of inertia, the resistance to change in rotational motion, and uh, again, that can be the law that goes with that is Newton's second law for rotations. That's the total torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Again, the cause is equal to the property times the effect. Uh, you may have seen the uh, uh, fluid flow, um, Poise's equation. So that says that pressure differences drive fluid flow. Um, so the pressure difference is the cause and the effect is fluid flow, so this is the volume flow rate, the amount of the volume of liquid, the number of liters per second that is flowing through a pipe. But then the pipe has its own property of the resistance. And the resistance for a pipe is eight eta, which is the viscosity times the length of the pipe, divided by pi times the radius of the pipe to the fourth power. That's the resistance of the pipe. And again, we have a uh, we have a force, uh, a law between that, which is the pressure difference is equal to the property 8 eta L over pi R to the fourth, that's the resistance, times the effect, which is the fluid flow rate, the volume flow rate, which is uh, delta V, the uh, amount of volume passing a point in a certain time. We're going to have another one here, and this is for current, electric current. And this is telling us that a difference in potential, or a voltage difference, causes current. And this is a uh, cur the current, we use the letter I for that, and that is a change in charge, or a, a amount of charge passing a certain point per time. Um, and, but there's a property in the middle called the resistance, and that is a property of the wire or the uh, uh, material that the current is traveling through. And as you guessed it, there's a law that goes with this, that is the um, voltage difference is equal to the uh, uh, property, the resistance, times the current. And this is what we call Ohm's law. So this helps us define what current is, although actually current is defined independent of Ohm's law. Um, what is current then? Uh, current is the amount of uh, charge that's passing a certain point per time interval. So it's really a flow rate. Okay. So the symbol we use for current is I, and that is the amount of charge in coulombs uh, divided by the time interval that it takes for that to pass a certain point. So just to be clear, you could have a really thick wire with tons of charge uh, passing at a very small velocity. Uh, and that will give you a certain amount of charge passing per time interval. Or you could have a, uh, a tiny amount of charge and it could have an enormous velocity and still have the same total amount of charge passing that point per time interval. So I just want to clarify that current is not speed. It really doesn't have anything to do with speed. It's the amount of charge. If you were to count the number of electrons passing a point per second, that would be current. But the speed of the individual electrons is not current. Okay, so this is not a velocity. It's going to be measured in coulombs per second, um, as it should be. It's really a flow rate, so you need to think about it in terms of flow. Current flows from this point to the other point, and uh, do not be tempted to think of it in terms of a velocity. All right.